Hey everybody, it's Cheryl Lacey Donovan and this is 3D Motivation because we're coming to you three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to empower you to become the change that you would like to see. And before we get started, I just want to remind you to please, if you have not already done so, subscribe to 3D Motivation so that you can receive information as to when these different podcasts are being uploaded to Spreaker. Also want to remind you to connect with us on Real Life Real Faith with Cheryl Lacey Donovan on Facebook, Real Faith Mag at uh, Twitter, and also on Instagram at Real Life Real Faith. And if you are being inspired and encouraged about what you're hearing here on 3D Motivation, please make sure you share it with others and remind them to also join us and subscribe to what we're doing here. Um, I am excited about what we're going to be talking about here today because it is something that I believe all of us um, find ourselves dealing with from time to time. And you know what? Um, the thing is, when I think about my growing up and when I think about other people growing up around me, it's amazing at all of the dreams that you have. And, you know, you just really believe that your life is going to go in a certain direction. And I'm not any different than anybody else. I was a dreamer as well. But as we know, life does happen. You know, now I'm, I'm one of those children. I'm a product of the 60s. Yeah, I'm a product of the 60s, turned 50 this year. And I grew up watching a lot of television shows that were family oriented shows. The Facts of Life, One Day at a Time, What's Happening, Eight is Enough, The Jeffersons, Sanford and Son, Good Times. Just you know, a lot of different stuff that was very wholesome TV and showed families that worked in a certain way. But, you know, I, I enjoyed those kinds of things. But one of the things that I recognize is that a lot of times our families are not quite like the ones that we see on TV and if we're not careful we can find ourselves in a situation where we believe that um, our lives may end up like the ones we see with loving parents that are doing everything right and they have all the answers but the reality is just not like that and while I didn't have you know a very very bad uh, growing up experience you know with my parents and what have you I do know that there are people that were around me whose experiences were a whole lot worse you know there are people that were forced out of their dreams because of the lifestyles that they were living. Their parents did not look anything like what they saw on TV. They, you know, they didn't have the right answers. They didn't have a book, even though, you know, in my opinion, I think the Bible is one of the best ones that we can use. But everybody is not there. Um, you know, people didn't see on TV anybody that was getting cursed out or anybody that was being beaten or anybody that was being abused. But there are many, many people out there that experienced and witnessed and were victims of physical and verbal abuse, you know, at very, very early ages. You know, they may have um, found themselves in situations that uh, they were being a mommy figure or a daddy figure because they had children or siblings that were underneath them. And, and their mom may have had to work or may have been intoxicated or dad may have been intoxicated or in jail or there may have been drugs. You know, just all kinds of things that look nothing like what we saw on television going on in these families. So it may have been difficult for them to you know maneuver life and to get to a place where they felt like they were safe you know and for many of them it may have you know been you know they're looking at this and what's happening on tv and it seemed like a fairy tale and i you know i for one remember you know even saying and in my life it may not have even been that bad but saying that you know i'm not gonna grow up and, and do my children like my, like my parents did me i'm i'm gonna treat them differently or you know you say that you make a promise to yourself that you're gonna be different from your mother a different mother to your children or a different father to your children than what you had and after i i got older and actually went into seminary and started taking some classes and and i found out that those kinds of things are what we call uh inner vows and bitter root judgments inter inner vows and bitter root judgments in other words we've made a judgment against our parent and already declared that they were bad people and made inner vows with ourselves saying that we're not going to be like them without even understanding what made them them because for all we know they may have gone through the same thing that we did 
and just were not strong enough to be able to get themselves out of it or away from it. And that's where that inner vow comes in because unless we have um, um, a, a support system or unless we have somebody that can help bring us past that and you know and for me that somebody is God all day long and then not only God but those godly people that he puts around us around us and surrounds us with then we could also end up very much like those people that we're trying to be different from so and, and in a lot of cases that's what happens that promise ends up you know <laughs> being just that uh, something that just kind of flew away in the wind you know because you end up being exactly like those people that you said you wouldn't be like. You end up being physically and verbally, mentally and emotionally abusive to your own children. Even though you promised that you wouldn't be because you didn't recognize that you could not do it in and of yourself. You did not recognize the generational curse for what it was. You did not recognize what types of seeds had been sown even before you came on the scene. So you didn't recognize that that, that was something that you would not be able to move past all on your own right so you found yourself disciplining your own children with belts and extension cords and you know talking down to them and not telling them how much you love them and you know just doing the same things that you saw in your own life because you could not do uh, anything any different or perhaps you ended up being that hero child you were just so perfect until it created a whole lot of anxiety in you so um you know, at the end of the day, you, you, you find yourself imitating what your parents have done or different aspects of what your parents had done, not understanding that, you know, they're not any different from you. They didn't have the best life either, perhaps. They didn't have all of the rules down pat if they were young. They may not have understood how important their examples were would be before you um, and but you know the other side to that also and i think it was uh tyler perry that may have said it that you know sometimes in those situations what we need to glean from our parents is the fact that they have taught us the things not to do right taught you the things not to do so having said all of that when you look to God and when you allow God to go before you and lead you and allow that to happen, he can show you the kind of parent that he wants you to be. That's why I said earlier that the Bible, in my opinion, is the guidebook or it are the rules for how to be a parent because there is no parent any better than God, right? So if we follow some of his guidelines, it can help us to be the kinds of parents that he has called us to be. And we can free ourselves from our past. Now, here's another thing that sometimes can be difficult for parents. When we recognize that we have not been the kind of parents that we wanted to be for our children, we have to go to them and ask them for their forgiveness, right? Ask God to come into your lives and help us, uh, guide us to become whole. Help us to be freed from our past. Because the word reminds us that whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Allow your children to speak freely and let you know what their feelings are. And make sure that they understand that you hear them. Now see, sometimes these are the kinds of things that we needed. And if we had had those things, we might not have perpetrated the same thing on our children. The other thing we have to do is to learn how to come against the generational curses and the word curses that may have been spoken over our lives. And when we have perpetrated the same thing and spoken those word curses against our children's lives, we also need to come against those and bind them and cancel those things that we may have spoken. You know, things like, you know, you, you're going to be like your no good daddy. You're going to be like your, your no good mama, your crackhead, you know, parents or whatever the case may be, because those words are very, very important especially coming from us because we have been the chosen stewards over our children's lives, right? So when you get to a point where you know the curse that is on your family, then you can understand how you have the power to break it through prayer and through faith. 
First Peter 4 through 7 says, The end of everything is near. Therefore, practice self-control and keep your minds clear so that you can pray. In this season, in this time, in this hour, taking back our families is probably one of the most important things that we could do. Right, a lot of times the shows and the things that we see on TV are not anything like what I am used to when I was growing up. You know, I, in in fact, I really believe that they teach disrespect towards parents now. And so, what we have to do is to show unity and self-respect in our own households by allowing everybody to be heard and allowing everybody to express themselves. And I was a big proponent of that. You know, some of my uh, uh, friends looked at me kind of crazy when I would allow my children to speak, but I said, you know what they are individuals they are humans they are people and they are they are allowed to have feelings doesn't mean it's going to change my mind doesn't mean that if i'm punishing them that i'm going to say oh okay because you said that i'm not going to punish you now but it does mean that i have allowed them to express themselves and that i have heard them and at the end of the day i'm still the parent i'm going to exact whatever discipline i think applies to the situation but at the end of the day respect gets respect if you want to be respected you have to show respect um you know i I, these are the kinds of things that i did with my children as they were growing up i was i was a single mom for a long period of time and it was very difficult but i knew that with god i could love my children and through loving them i would always be a better parent i learned how i could you know take time out you know we like to put our children in timeouts but I learned how to take my own time out so that I would not be dealing with them from a place of anger I've been at work all day the people at work had gotten on my last nerve and then all I could think of was to come home and yell and scream and shout at my children and you know to to send them away and give them things that would placate them TV you know video games and things like that I stopped doing that I take took my own timeouts and waited until I was calm enough to approach a situation and institute the proper punishment that was available for the particular circumstance like taking away their privileges or, or whatever the case may be or things that they may have enjoyed and here are some things that I think that can possibly help you first of all pray and ask God to give you the peace and come into your own life and family life to guide and restore everything. Pray and ask for peace. Surround yourself with positive influences, people that you can talk to, that you can re- that can relate to your situation and give you insight and wise suggestion. Sometimes a different pair of eyes can help. Don't compare yourself to other people that 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 have abused you break out of the comparison cycle and and all of those barriers that it creates and and be the best that god has created you to be um exhale exhale learn to exhale and get rid of all of the negative energy and, and allow it to leave you so that you can be a place of serenity rid yourself of anything anything that's toxic toxic relationships toxic circumstances so that your life can can be more balanced open your mind to new and unexpected possibilities that's something that can be hard for all of us and then lastly live laugh and love laugh at yourself laugh at life understand that you can't take everything seriously because we all make mistakes When you apply these things, I promise you that real faith will work through God. I've seen it every time. You can be free. You can be free of your past, of all of the word curses, of all the generational curses, but the power rests in you. Remember to like us on Facebook, Real Life, Real Faith with Cheryl Lacey Donovan. Subscribe to the podcast. Visit our website, www.CherylLaceyDonovanSpeaks.com. Uh, make sure you are, are sharing this with other people if you're being inspired and uplifted. And I want to remind you, as always, that God can do exceedingly and abundantly more than you could ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in you. Be blessed.